Welcome to the Office of Demonology. My name is Dr. J, retired demon hunter and knower of things. Today I'm going to do another Thrift Store Book Haul, Volume 3. Hey Edgar, he's going to do another Thrift Store Book Haul. Ugh. You know Raven, Edgar probably enjoys these book hauls, so don't try to rile him up. Book one. <laughs> Number one book, Live Girls by Ray Garten. Look at that cover. Really exciting. It's a vampire book. Uh, he lost his girl, blown his job, and he's looking for consolation in the seedy precincts of Times Square. As dusk falls, a garish glow envelops the street where Live Girls beckons Davy through its doors. Into a world of strange, savage ecstasy, into the pale, irresistible arms of a woman who offers him the kiss of demons in exchange for eternal life. A woman so ravishing, so insatiable, that he must say yes again and again until he can no longer say no. He has given her the vital essence of his body. Now, she will devour his soul. That sounds freaking amazing, right? That who doesn't want this? And then in the front it says, The Most Nightmarish Vampire Story I Have Ever Read by Ramsey Campbell. Not in great shape. The spine's kind of messed up. And then I took the sticker off and it kind of ruined the cover here. I wish it was in nice shape. I mean, considering it's, it's old, it's from, uh, let's find out the year, 1987. So, considering it's from 1987, it's in pretty good shape. Have you ever heard of Ray Garten? Have you read this book? I really would like to know your thoughts if you have. But I love this artwork. Now, there are different versions of the cover, but this one's my favorite. Book two. <laughs> Next up, this is called Witchcraft at Salem by Chadwick Hansen. What's interesting about this book is this guy is trying to say there was actual witches. I don't know. I have to read it to see what he's going on about. But I just finished a book called Witchcraft, A History in 13 Trials. I'm going to do a video on that book, possibly comparing it to this book. I'm not sure. It depends on how fast I can get this book done. Probably try to compare them both. Because this guy's going on there, and here's what it says. Were the witch hunters wrong? Question mark. So yeah, they were. They were wrong. But this guy goes on. Of course they were. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows there were no witches. Everybody knows there are no such things as evil eyes, spells that strangle, curses that kill. But now, an extraordinary book is changing everybody's mind. This is that extraordinary book. He goes on in the back that says, The popular view holds that there was no witchcraft practiced at Salem. Now, if you're saying that people did not practice, not necessarily witchcraft, but folk magic maybe, any type of magic, that doesn't necessarily mean they're witches and they should be killed. So I'm curious to see if that's where he's going. Like there was folk ma magic but is he saying that this stuff actually did work, that people were strangled by some curse? Oh, uh, let's look and see when this book was put together. 1969. 1969, Witchcraft at Salem. Have you read this? Do you know who this guy is? Have you heard anything? Let me know in the comments. Uh, really excited to dig deep into this and compare it to the recent book I just read, Witchcraft, A History in 13 Trials. Book three. <laughs> Next up, Volkovich's Horror Miscellany. And it says at the bottom, stories, facts, tales, and trivia. It's a very thin, tiny book, but I always pick up horror stuff. Now, this is really cool because it's got, like, just information about Universal Monster movies, but it also has a list of gothic horror books. And I'm going to, so it says, a gothic horror reader, the first wave, and it lists all these. So I'm thinking of using this book on this channel, maybe going through and talking about, according to this book, maybe what they feel are the best vampire movies, or what they feel are the best books. So this book is definitely going to be something to inspire me for future videos. It looks like it had a Borders, or Barnes & Noble sticker, I think that's Borders, uh, right there, which... 
If you want to know how to get some of this stuff, using a hair dryer will kind of melt the sticky stuff and make this easier to get off. So try that. If you have books that have stickers on them, get a hair dryer, heat it up a little bit, and then you should be able to get this stuff off. Little tip from Dr. J, retired demon hunter and knower of things, because I know things. Book four. Ha, ha. Next up is The Secret of the Old Mill, The Hardy Boys. This is book three. Regina over at Regina's Haunted Library has done her recent book haul, and she reveals that she collects Nancy Drew. I collect Hardy Boys because this was big. I did like Nancy Drew, the TV show, when I was a kid, but the book, I definitely uh, read these when I was a kid. Now, this isn't a special old-school Hardy Boys. This is a reprint that came out, looks like... 1990. So this one's 1990. I still like the old cover. I love that they use the artwork here. I'm going to start talking about Hardy Boys. I'll pick them up, read it, do a little video on what I thought of this. Kind of like reminiscing on my love of these books as a child. Book five. Yeah, yeah. Next up. I Am Legend. I didn't hate the movie of this. Now, if you don't know I Am Legend, first of all, it's by Richard Matheson, who I absolutely love his stories. He did a lot of great episodes of Twilight Zone. He wrote those. He's got great short story collections. Richard Matheson, excellent. The book, I'm not sure if I ever read I Am Legend. Maybe, I can't remember if I did, but I'm going to read it again if I have, and if not, I'm reading it for the first time. So there are three movies I know that were created from this book. First one, I believe, is with Vincent Price, and it's The Last Man on Earth. The second one is The Omega Man, and I think that's with Charlton Heston. And then the one with Will Smith, I Am Legend, I believe this is the original title. I don't like the cover. I wish it wasn't the movie cover. But if I ever find, like, an old version of this, you know, by Matheson with the original cover, like, first edition, I will... I will... Give this away online. Another thing, this is a spoiler alert. If you haven't seen this movie, a dog dies in the movie, and it's probably the hardest scene. I was so angry when this movie came out, and I'm sitting there, tears pouring down my face in the movie theater while this is happening. And I'm like, no, no, don't ever kill a dog in a movie. You will never make me happy. And that kind of pissed me off that they did that. Um, really, not necessary. Don't kill animals. Book six. Huh? Next up, Knights of the Living Dead. This is edited by Jonathan Mayberry and George Romero. This has quite a few names on it, Brian Keene being one that I just reviewed. If you haven't watched my review of Brian Keene's book, The Rising, I'll put it up here and you can click on that and watch that review. I wasn't a big fan of that book. So I'm hoping that maybe uh, Brian Keene can redeem himself with a short story in here. Lots of other names that are in here. So I'm really excited to dive into this. These are all new original stories based on Night of the Living Dead. One of my favorite movies. I also did a podcast. I have a podcast called The Real Demons of Pop Culture. And I did an episode about Night of the Living Dead the making of it, and then the influence of zombies and things like that in pop culture. So you could check that out. Just search The Real Demons of Pop Culture on your favorite podcast platform. It looks pretty good. I mean, who knows? I love short story collections. I'm looking forward to diving into this. So, Knights of the Living Dead. Book seven. <laughs> I always go after Stephen King, but I normally do not go after Stephen King paperbacks. But this one was in such pristine condition. It's Duma Key. I know nothing at all about this book. After a terrible construction site accident severed Edgar Fremantle's right arm, scrambled his mind, and imploded his marriage, the wealthy Minnesota builder faces the ordeal of rehabilitation all alone and full of rage. Renting a house on Duma Key, a stunningly beautiful and eerily undeveloped splinter off the Florida coast, Edgar slowly emerges from his prison of pain to bond with Elizabeth Eastlake, a sick elderly woman whose roots are tangled deep in this place. And he heals, 
He paints feverishly, compulsively, his exploding talent, both a wonder and a weapon. For Edgar's creations are not just paintings. Ooh, what could they be? But portals for the ghosts of Elizabeth's past, and their power cannot be controlled. That sounds awesome. What I find fascinating is that Stephen King was in that horrible accident where the van hit him. He had a long, painful recovery. I'm sure, reading the back of this, that he probably took a lot of that and put it into this book. And when did this come out? So this is 2008. Like I said, I don't know if I would have picked it up if it was all beat up, but this is in such beautiful condition that I picked it up. I haven't read it yet. So if I find a first edition of this, which I don't think any, most of the first editions of Stephen King's that are hard to get are from early, his early career. The newer stuff's pretty easy to find first editions because they made them in the millions. I'm sure I'll find a first edition at some point, but Stephen King's Duma Key. Book eight. <laughs> Here's another Stephen King, but this is a first edition. Mr. Mercedes. I've actually been looking for this one for quite some time because it's a trilogy, the Bill Hodges trilogy. And, oh, it's got a little, like, kind of reflective umbrella there. Like, you can see that. That's kind of cool. I started reading this. So far, I'm really digging it. It's about this guy who basically runs over a bunch of people who are waiting in line for a job fair, and he's driving a Mercedes, hence his name, Mr. Mercedes. A retired detective gets a letter from this guy after he retires, and that's the one case he never solved, so Bill Hodges is trying to solve it kind of on the side. He doesn't tell the police about the letter he gets. It's interesting because Stephen King, a lot of people are like, oh, the master of horror. But it's not paranormal yet. I don't know if it will get that. I doubt it will. But a lot of Stephen King's are just these character studies. And so far, we're learning about the killer and the detective. And, and it's really well done. And I'm really invested in the characters. There's no horror in the sense of like horror movies just that there's an awful person out there that a detective needs to find, kind of like a Silence of the Lambs feeling. And there's the back cover. And if you read it, you'll understand why there's ice cream truck, and you'll read why, you'll understand why there's that little smiley face there on the, the spine. Beautiful condition, so I picked it up. It says it's a first edition, 2014. Now, I always, when I go into the thrift shop, I always go, and then I look, I go in a couple pages to see, is there any autograph? A Stephen King autograph would be like finding gold. It's, it's really rare. I don't think he signs much. I always, it doesn't matter Stephen King, any author that I want to go, I always look at the first couple pages. Because even if it's in crappy condition, but it's been autographed, I dig that and I will pick that up. So that's a little tip from Dr. J, knower of things. Always look to see if there's an autograph. Book nine. <laughs> and finally, the most evil secret societies in history. If a book has the word evil, this big on the cover, I'm buying it. So, this is 15 of the darkest, most insidious organizations the world has ever seen. This book came out in... It's also in beautiful shape, too. This was from 2005, so it's not that old. I mean, at this point, it's almost 20 years old. But to me, 2005 feels like yesterday. But it is in very nice condition. Let's take a look at the... Uh, evil societies they're going to talk about. It's by Shelley Klein. So we have the Illuminati, Argentium Ostrum, Orgies in Sicily. That's going to be a good chapter. The Thule Society, that's Nazism's precursors. Muti, the Tang, Ku Klux Klan, Order of the Solar Temple, the Hashishum, the Mau Mau. Om Shrinkio, Odessa, the Socialist Patience Collective, the Thugs, 
Ul. That's uh, worshippers of Kali. The thugs are the thuggies from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. And they're worshipping Kalima. Kalima! Um, then we got the Camera and the Hellfire Club. So this will be fun reading to learn about the most evil secret societies. What? Uh, if you look here, some nice pictures here of these. All right, we got the KKK up there. I think this might be Aleister Crowley, but I could be wrong. And that's, I think, Kali over here. Kalima! I don't know what this guy is. Or that up here. But I'll let you know. And it's illustrated as well, so I will have fun illustrations. So that's it for my recent thrift store book haul, Volume 3. I'm going to do a video on this book and compare it with this book and see what the differences are. This book's really like, yeah, a lot of people died because people believe stupid things. This book is saying those stupid things are real. So let's find out in the future. So if you want to find that out, you should hit that subscribe, hit the bell so you'll know when this stuff is coming out. And I'll be back soon with a new video.